Hey everyone, as you'll see on the screen, you can click through to the Q&A section you're interested in, or you can view the entire video. The first question is, do you think the starting material for the novel lysergamide research chemicals is LSD, or is the synthesis by the lab truly operating above board at no point in the synthesis route is LSD formed as an intermediary product? Because for some of these drugs, we don't even have any published synthesis route available online, it's very difficult to say if LSD is being used as a starting point, is being used at some point in the process for these drugs. I do believe it is likely there are synthesis routes that are being used that haven't been published and are only part of the industry that's creating the lysergamides, and those routes may not involve LSD. I don't think it's necessary to use LSD, even though we've seen some synthesis methods that involve LSD. For example, with Alad and Ethlad, two substances that Alexander Shulgin at some point did describe in T-Call, he talked about using for both of them nor LSD. And nor LSD is a slightly tweaked version of LSD, which when he describes creating nor LSD, he first starts with normal LSD. If that same method was being used for these various other drugs, then there would be illegal LSD being used at some point. But I do not believe that it's necessary to do that. And for that reason, there are probably methods being used in this industry which do not involve LSD. Some people could be using LSD as a starting point. They could be copying the T-call information to create some of the chemicals that Shulgin talked about. But for the other ones where Shulgin didn't talk about making them and there's no published information available, and even for the ones where there is published information but a better route may exist, there probably are those routes and don't involve LSD. The next question is, are you atheistic, agnostic, spiritual, or religious? I would largely consider myself to be an atheist. That's simply because I do not believe in things like God, whether that's a dude in the sky somewhere or in the more esoteric God as the, you know, spiritual force of the universe point of view. Uh, I also don't believe in reincarnation and some of the other common spiritual beliefs that exist. That being said, I do have a lot of interest in religions and spiritual beliefs from around the world. For a number of years now, I've spent a bit of time reading and learning about Buddhism and some of the viewpoints that I currently have on the world and just how to live are in some way influenced by reading and learning about Buddhism, even though I'm not a Buddhist and I don't believe in some of the things that are common within that belief system. I also have a big interest in other religious beliefs, pretty much any religious belief, but specifically recently, things like early Christianity, been reading the Nag Hammadi scriptures. Beyond that, I have, for a period of time, was interested in the Quran and Islam, and I read the entire Quran. And anyway, so I do have a lot of interest. I'm not not interested in religion and spirituality. I just am not aligned with any one of them currently. The next question is, are you going to do a report on 4-F-MPH anytime soon? And the answer is yes, I'm going to do one now. 4-F-MPH, which is 4-fluoromethylphenidate, is a stimulant with intactogen and some euphoriant qualities, and I used it twice in order to characterize and record the effects. The first time I used it, I used 20 milligrams orally suspended in water. And about 45 minutes into using it, I began to feel very stimulated, mainly mentally. There was very little physical effect, which was a good thing for this situation. And I had a much greater motivation to work. I had a, a feeling of wanting to connect with people and speak with them, even just online. There was a just a very strong euphoria. I was very happy while working and talking with people and just doing various things while on the drug. By the way, this lasted for about three hours total, and there weren't too many negatives. The main negative was some muscle tension, which was very minimal, and jaw tightness, which jaw tightness appears with a lot of stimulants for me, so that wasn't too surprising by any means. Outside of those other those effects I've mentioned, there was a chilly energy feeling in my head and face for much of the time, and there was a lot of music enhancement. I very much enjoyed listening to any of my normal music and it just really put me in the zone combined with the stimulation to get work done. I wear a heart rate monitor, at least nowadays, whenever I'm using a drug, I just want to see the graph and measure my heart rate for the entire period. And during this experience with 20 milligrams, I spent most of my time in the 90s, 
which wasn't bad. That was only slightly elevated above what I would normally expect to be. And it was along the lines of any mild stimulant, what I would receive in terms of heart rate changes. My second experience was with 30 milligrams orally suspended in water. This time, the effects again lasted for say three, four hours at most. So it's a fairly short acting drug, uh, not terribly short compared to some stimulants, but not long either, which is normally a nice thing for me. And this experience included significantly more euphoria, stimulation, a desire to connect with people. Like I said before, there was a day, which was the day that I was using the drug where I believe I sent out probably 20 tweets and responded to 50 others or, or something insane like that, which is beyond what I would normally do online. And I was also talking to a bunch of people on Twitter and elsewhere. And that was largely just coming from a, a strong desire to just talk with everybody. Again, music enhancement was stronger, just like the other effects were stronger. And the overall experience was significantly more recreational than the first experience. The first experience was fun and enjoyable and recreational, but this one was recreational to the point of actually being somewhat distracting from more tedious work. Along with the boost in the psychological effects and the way that I was feeling from the stimulation at this dose compared to 20 milligrams, there was also a physiological response that I was able to measure with the heart rate monitor where it jumped quite frequently into the 120s and spent most of the time in the 120, uh, excuse me, the 110s, which means that I was averaging about 20, 30 above where I was at with 20 milligrams, which is then 40 or 50 above where I would normally be when working. So it was a fairly significant effect for the entire experience on my heart rate and significantly greater than with the lower dose, but it corresponded well with the way that I was feeling. There wasn't too much perception of physical stimulation, but the heart rate tracked well with the increase in the psychological effects. That's why it's nice to, to track your heart rate like I do when using these substances. Unfortunately, the downside of these extra recreational effects was a very harsh come down. For about six hours, I had very little motivation to work and I just had an overall blah feeling. Not necessarily depressed, but just wasn't interested in things. I was indifferent for that period of time. And it was the largely the opposite of what I experienced during the main effects, which is to be expected. So at least that period only lasted for a, a little while, like I said, about six hours. And the downside with this effect is that I can definitely picture somebody who is in a different setting or is approaching the drug in a different way, redosing because of that strong come down and the, the peak effects being fairly recreational. I can certainly see somebody redosing to get back to that state, which in those situations would be a negative part of the drug. So you really just have to exert self-control in those situations and just wait it out and you'll feel better in a period of time. As always, if you want to support the channel, please do so on Patreon at patreon.com slash the drug classroom. You can also contribute on YouTube itself by going to the drug classroom's main channel page. You can then also contribute via PayPal or Bitcoin if you'd like. If you want to connect with me on Twitter, you can do so at Seth A. Fitzgerald or via email at the drug classroom at gmail.com. And you can reach out on Reddit and my username and the subreddit are both the drug classroom. There will be a link to a Reddit thread for discussion discussion in the description. Please post any questions you have for next week in the comment section or on Reddit, and I will talk to all of you soon.